Okay, we'll start now. First one, this one, it's nematode. Or you can say Ascalhemminthes. These organisms are triploblastic. That means they have three germ layer. That is ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Okay. And they are what? Cylindrical worms. Okay. Like this. And they have pseudocelum. False. No true cavity. Okay. And their body is bilateral symmetry. Right. If you are cutting it in bilateral direction, it will be in equal phases. Okay. Hello, Advika. Good evening. Hello, ma'am. And they are what? Parasitic worms. And they cause what? They will cause diseases like elephantiasis. Okay. Have you seen um, anyone with uh, large legs? This. Okay. Because of this worm. And they are also found in intestine. They are called round worms. Because they, uh, when you cut this, right, they will appear uh, circular. And they are unsegmented. They don't have any segments. Okay. And what? Uh, they have complete. Hello, Arham. Good evening. They have what? Complete elementary kernel. That means they have both mouth and anus. An example, Ascaris. Okay. Butcheraria bran brancofti. This is the worm which causes this elephantiasis. Okay. Next, we have Annelida. Here also, it is triploblastic animal and bilateral symmetry. And they have an elongated body. Elongated. And they are vermiform. That means they are worm-like. And they are cylindrical. And they are also draw dorsal ventricle flattened. We have learned here in the platyhelminthes, right? Flattened ship. Here also they are flattened, okay? And, and they are found in uh, freshwater marine, marine water also, and also in the land. And they have true body cavity, coelom. So they are coelomates. And their organ is differentiated. And they have segments. Can you see in this picture, they are having segments, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's the difference between this nematode and annelida. And what do we have here? Segments. These are. This is called metameric segmentation. Okay, this segmentation. So many segments. This is called metam metameric segmentation. Okay, and locomotion. How it is done? It is done by the parapodia. This light, this appendages, right? By this only they do their motion. Okay. Example, what? Nereris. Okay. Then earthworm will also come under this category. Okay. Annelida. Next, we have Orthopoda. And it is the largest group of ants. Largest group. Okay. This big ant will come under this. Okay, and butterflies, okay, houseflies, bees, and prawns, all this, then spider. So they are the largest group of animals, and they are triploblastic, and they are also bilateral, symmetrical, and segment. They also have segmented body parts. Okay, see segments, they have segments, and they are jointed legs, they have jointed legs squared. Okay. And they, their body, it contains exo uh, exo exoskeleton, okay? And it is made up of chitin. Next, body cavity present. And it is filled with what? Blood. And they have open circulatory system. They don't have vessels, okay? So, uh, blood will not flow in the blood vessels. Example, we have cockroaches, periplaneta, then plamon. Okay, you can take any example, muska, arania, two, three examples you can learn. Next, we have mollusca. They, their body, right? It is soft and they are bilateral symmetric. Okay, and only little segments are present and they are without appendages. They don't have appendages. And coelom cavity here, it is reduced. They have only some, uh, what? Cavity, some cavity only there. 
this oyster clams have you seen this thing this is clam they what do they produce they have pearl okay it is very valuable because of that only these right these two are getting um, endangered then open circulatory system that means open circulatory system means they don't have blood vessels blood is present everywhere okay they don't have any carrier like vessels okay like vein arteries it is not present in them okay and uh, their body is divided into head and rear head then muscular foot and dorsal what mass visceral mass then how do they perform the motion by muscular foot this and example are pila unio chiton and octopus all these are examples next we have echinodermata what are they they are spiny skin animal starfish and they are what triploblastic coelomate and unsegmented they don't have segments they are not segmented and next they have radial symmetry right radial symmetry if you cut like this like this like this what will happen they are of equal sizes equal phases and next what is there here they are free living and one more thing radial symmetry in adult form but larval stage it is bilateral and they have what tube system here this thing is the tube system okay for what for the um, locomotion and the this this feet system they walk through this only this tube feet here exchange of gases also and uh, they walk also by this then their digestive system it is what complete an excretory organ that is absent and body covering they have spiny what hard calciferous uh, this they have calcium carbonate okay plates and they form what rigid and flexible endoskeleton example here we have antedon polythuria and echinus only this thing you can see then this asterias these two next category we have going to one is chordata chordata that means they have notochord here diploblastic coelomate with bilateral symmetry and notochord is present what is notochord this this backbone the support system okay and there are two groups protochordata and vertebrata okay protochordata this one and vertebrata this here we have what they are diploblastic bilateral symmetric and coelom same thing because we have already done it is chordata right so this thing will be present only with the difference here in this prochordata and vertebrata is that this notochord right only it will be present only in some stages not throughout the life span like in the tail of young larva afterwards it won't be present that is the only difference here and this inside this vertebrata right they are different category different classes which we are going to learn first one is pisces here these are what fishes they are aquatic animals they have streamlined body okay like this and they have scales and they also have tail muscular tail then fins are present but limbs right limbs they are absent fins will be present and how do do, do their respiration by gills ma'am i got a question okay uh, then they are what cold blooded that means cold blooded shazan ma'am what is cold blooded ma'am animals ma'am uh, is have with in 10th uh, said right cold blooded yes ma'am warm, warm blooded cold blooded we are warm blooded yes ma'am uh, and cold blooded animals ma'am i think they don't like uh... ma'am like no, i don't like i don't know how to put it ma'am but like they exactly can't control they can't control their body heat or anything like it's not up to them it depends on the surroundings that they're present. like shark yes. and uh, snake yes correct correct so these are cold blooded 
that means their temperature will depend on their surrounding they cannot control their temperature like us we are warm blood okay and the uh, chamber two chambered heart okay and they lay eggs example all the fishes right sporodium and based on their skeleton right again they are divided into two categories first is bony fishes the next one is cartilage fishes okay bony fishes means their skeleton right they have bones okay endoskeleton there are many bones present many and here we have cartilage they have cartilage okay skeleton okay now here the gills right they are covered by operculum that means they have this covers covers leaf okay and their mouth is what terminal in position and here in this wait first one i'll tell this uh, cartilage for cartilage gills are not covered by operculum okay that means they don't have this cover slip and mouth is in ventricle position okay next air or swim bladder is it okay air or swim bladder it is what usually present okay here it is absent then example what rohu sea horse all this will come under the bony fish bo bony fishes category and here we have this angler fish loin fish rays dog fish all this will come under the cartilages fishes category okay next we'll go for this what is here class what amphibia this all thing are which phylum chordata okay this all thing chordata in chordata where sub phylum vertebrata okay phylum chordata sub phylum vertebrata and inside vertebrata we have five classes in that we have pisces okay next we'll go for the amphibians now this is the first group right that is to live on the land in the according to the evolution okay and they can live on land and water both the thing and they lack scales uh, and they have mucus gland so they secrete what mucus uh, to keep their skin moist and here they are again cold blooded and they have three chambered heart and they have head and trunk okay and neck tail right it may be present or absent okay both the thing can happen here next uh, respiration what either by gills in larva stage gills are are by lungs in most animal okay they require water for the reproduction okay because they lay their eggs in the water and the larva are aquatic they live in water and limbs are tetrapodes that means four limbed or uh, they can be pentadactyl that means five fingered limbs that means this leg and the uh, toes and the fingers right they can be four fingered they can have four finger or they can have five and they don't have what claws and they lay lay eggs oviparous example rana bufo salamander hyla these all these names are easy right next we have what reptila class reptila that means reptiles right so they have dry skin here in the amphibians moist skin here dry skin and they have scales here in the amphibians they don't have scales in the pisces they had scales okay and and they live in warmer region and they are also what cold blooded this is the first class of terrestrial animals that means they are land animals they lay eggs and uh, the eggs will have tough covering okay and lungs for the respiration okay uh, reptiles they bear two pairs of pentadactyl five digit five digit means five fingers five toes okay limbs and some snakes and the lizard right some lizard they don't have limbs some have some don't okay next we have what three chambered heart all 
three chambered heart except for the crocodile they have four chambered heart example we have this chelon champlion okay draco next we have what apes so in this apes they are birds they are warm blooded that means they control their body temperature and because of that they have four chambered heart and their body right it is divisible into head neck and trunk body trunk then tail okay they are flying animals okay and their exoskeleton outside right indo means in exo means out so outside uh, skeleton what is that they are covered with feathers okay and their four limbs this and this leg uh, this is modified into wings and jaws are modified into beak jaws into beak okay uh, bones they are light okay light they have bones their bones will be light because they will have air spaces um right and they have streamlined body why to reduce the air resistance because they have to fly right because of that their bones will be light and they will have streamlined body and they what they breathe through lungs and the birds they will lay eggs and this eggs right they have large amount of yolks and this shell covering that yolks right it is what heart example here we have example siconia siconia then pigeon sparrow hummingbird all that pigeon ostrich kiwi they are flightless bird that means they cannot fly okay next we have mammalia here in mammalia warm blooded four chambered heart and they have mammalian glands females females they have mammalian gland for production of milk that's why they are called mammalia mammalia okay mammals and they are the most advanced group they have well developed brain and they have what sweat glands oil glands and uh, uh, this swept, uh, swept glands and oil glands what are they used for for the lubricants and detoxifications okay and their skin they have hairs and they have pinna ear pinna and their limbs right they are for walking running and swimming and burrowing even flying like bats bat is not bird it is mammal why because they have mammalian gland they produce milk and next we have here um they produce young ones okay that is they are viviparous but some like platypus and ichnia exception okay they are oviparous that means they lay, lay eggs and they produce milk and this kangaroo right they give birth to poorly developed young ones fetuses like fetuses okay next we here the respiration is through lungs example ratus rat homo sapiens as okay then feel is bat dog all all this thing any examples you can give next we will go we are going for the nomenclature right naming the naming of the organism that is nomenclature okay uh this carlos i am in the starting of the class we have talked about carlos right what did he give he gave two kingdom classification and hierarchy of classification right all this thing and he also gave what binomial nomenclature okay binomial nomenclature that means the name uh, name of any organism will have two naming system okay first will be genus next will be species Gen genus species okay see any species right the genus will begin with capital letter and the species will begin with small letter and uh, when it is printed right it should be always written in italic okay when it is hand written right when we are writing like this rana i told genus right genus name capital so r is capital the starting letter then what species next the species trigrina right it should be in small letter now 
this i have written right so it should be underlined separately not like this if you are writing like this it is wrong it should be like this only while printing time it will be in italic okay slanted name should be in slanted see here also what i have done it is not coming okay this should be in slanted way okay example for animal see some names rana trigrina frog, frog lion what is the name of lion panthera leo okay house fly musca domes, domestica then crow crowus splendens cow bos taurus tiger panthera tigris uh, jaguar panthera onca this tiger this tiger jaguar lion they belong to same genus okay same genus see panthera 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 but the species it is different here it is leo here it is tigris here is it is onca for plant the same thing binomial naming here also we have neem azaricata indica maize zea maize rice oryza sativa lady's finger solanum esculentum wheat trichum estivum this rose rosa indica potato solanum tuber tuberosum okay this lady's finger and tomato they belong to same genus but different species here understood this naming system whenever yeah whenever you see in book right you can uh, you can know right it it is name of some organism you can guess right this chapter is over okay understood any doubt no ma'am no ma'am okay arham this naming system everyone understood right who gave this naming system this carlos okay he wrote a book inside this systema naturale right in the year what in the year 1735 this was the year binomial nomenclature and it, he is known as father of taxonomy this first word in a name first word will represent genus the second word will represent species of an organism okay so in this chapter what we have learned we have learned about the diversity in living organism how they are classified right five kingdom classification first one is this hierarchy right the categories kingdom phylum class order family genus species right in this five kingdom classification we have seen what are those five kingdom monera protista fungi plantae and animalia this monera protista fungi what is monera it is unicellular prokaryotes and what their nucleus is not well defined right they have nucleoid and in protista here also it is unicellular but it is eukaryote they have nucleus well defined nucleus okay so they will be also having what organelles in the fungi here we have multicellular okay eukaryotes but exception it is the unicellular yeast and these are what parasites next in the plant and animal animalia right these are also multicellular eukaryotes only the difference between both will be the cell wall presence or absence of cell wall right in plants there will be what cell wall will be present in the animals cell wall will not be present so after that we have gone inside this kingdom plantae in that we have seen the five phylums right thallophyta bryophyta pteridophyta gymnosperm and angiosperm right thallophyta this thallophyta bryophyta and pteridophyta they are what they are called as cryptogams okay why because their reproductive uh, structures are hidden okay this thallophyta it is also known as algae algae and bryophyta they are called amphibians of the plant kingdom pteridophyta they are also known as vascular cryptogams why because they have what tissue first tissues what is that conduction vascular tissues okay simple vascular tissues 
and these all things they will be having spores not seeds okay now next we'll go for the planerogram okay here we have two things that is gymnosperm and angiosperm why it is called planerogram that that means they are having seeds here in the gymnosperm seeds is what naked they don't have any covering here in the angiosperm there is covering and what is that covering after that uh, here the seeds right they are dicots divided into dicots and monocots all these things then we'll go for the animal kingdom that was for the plant kingdom now we'll go for the animal kingdom right animalia in the animalia we have what is the porifera right it is simplest okay the porifera and they don't have what is that they don't have body cavity it's element okay and they will be having numerous holes okay for the conduction of the food materials all that numerous holes and only larva stages they are motile that means they have movement in the adult they stick in one place okay next we have this colentreta or cnidarians this porifera it is it is also called as sponges colentreta cnidarians okay this is all so acelemates and they are diploblastic they have only two germ layer that is endoderm and ectoderm and endoderm okay that's all no mesoderm if triploblastic animals that means they will be also having mesoderm example we have hydra and what aurea okay next this flatty helminthes flat worms okay this worms right into three categories they are see flatty helminthes nematode and annelida all these three are worms right in the flatty helminthes they are flat worms in the annelida what are they they are round worms and in the no in the nematode what are they they are round worms in the annelida they are segmented worms okay now in the arthropoda it is the largest group okay and they have jointed body jointed legs okay or paired legs and they have open circulatory system the smallest car they have soft body okay in the ectoder meta they have shard shape body okay and what they are unsegmented next we have the chordata that means they have notochord in the protochordata notochord is only present in what some stages of life like in the larval stage in the vertebrata they are present throughout the life span pisces what is there in pisces can inventor they have streamlined body and they are cold blooded and they lay eggs very simple right in amphibia what is there here they uh, they live in both land and water okay they require water for their reproduction because larva they are aquatic and they lay eggs they don't have scale reptilia they have dry skin and they are first terrestrial animal and they lay eggs apes here they are warm blooded and they are flying animals they uh, they breathe through lungs and they lay eggs here in the mammalia what is that warm blooded and they have mammillary gland to produce milk okay females have that and what is their their limbs are are used for walking running swimming etc and they are what they give birth to young ones that's all today is class over in the next class we will be having test okay one hour after that i'll start taking the next class okay one hour test after that class okay the next chapter we are going to learn about is uh, why do we fall ill okay